and fantastic toys that we're going to have to play with, uh, supposedly in November and then delayed into the next year. <laughs> so uh, last year we did a live, I did a live commentary, I believe. I th- believe you were working at the time uh, mm-hmm. at a full-time position where they didn't let you play video games. Like, what the hell? I know. So stupid. <laughs> yeah. Who has jobs like that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, I, I took a few days off, and James and I and then a couple other folks jumped in, and we covered each each show. And we're going to make some changes this year, even unless someone really begs us to do it. But we're definitely not going to be covering the PC Gamer show that's not happening. <laughs> uh, I, don't I care. feel like I missed something. Well, the PC Gamer Show was three hours long and was really boring. Um, it was just really bad. It was like, it was like a really bad um, cable television sit down show. You know, where the guests are like, "Who are these people?" Like the clips were terrible. Uh, Day Nine was hosting. He was the best thing about it. Like he was very positive, but man it just fell so flat but um and then you know there's a bunch of shows on on sunday too you've got ea and bethesda on sunday so that's gonna be crazy but um i'm looking forward to seeing what people think because i want to know what they want to want to do and yeah i'm happy to do whatever first of all i find this whole graphic a little bit um confusing because they use like four different (laughs) shades of pinky purple but they all look almost exactly the same to me (laughs) i i uh there was a better one that I had, I had seen around there that actually had like different colors for each day. But I look at you're right. You look at this and it's like, well, it's light pink to a light purple in terms of your timing. But really, if you just you find your time zone, you look across and kind of you know guesstimate. But you kind of got Sunday is EA and Bethesda. Monday is Microsoft, PC Gamer, Ubisoft, and Sony. And then you have Tuesday with Nintendo. Although I don't know how like. Nintendo's going to work because I don't think we're going to sit there for eight hours watching the same 30 minute gameplay loop of The Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. Although if it is the best thing ever, maybe we will. I don't know. What do you think? Well, it says, uh, what does that say? Like treehouse only or something for Nintendo. So like, it seems like the, the big day is Monday, right? So yeah, it it is. So yeah, Monday is is the big day for your announcements. You're going to get your, your Mass Effect Andromeda, your Halo 6, your uh, Uncharted 5, just joking. And, uh, and I think... Step. Yeah, so it looks like uh, I'm, I'm interested in Bethesda, but EA can... Yeah, I, I'm not giving EA any more of my money, so they can just... Yeah, whatever. I mean, the only... I guess, sorry. Mass Effect will be the only time that they get my money in the near future. So, yeah. Um, but That'll yeah, be a long presentation a... <laughs> to sit through just for Mass Effect. Yeah, exactly. Like I can get all the Mass Effect information later. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll we'll look at the big ones and whatever we're interested in, unless the unless the patrons or the or the listeners like really chime in. And I mean, man, you're gonna have to. They're gonna have to do something special to get me to tune in for that PC Gamer show because. Whew, that was, yeah, that was terrible last year. But yeah, so I think um, the Monday Monday is probably the best day to do some sort of something. So uh, sure. yeah, you guys let us know in either there's the TGI Discord, there's uh, mm-hmm. the Joss Plays Twitch chat, which is going on right now. Just uh, let us know what you want us to do in terms of coverage. So we've got kind of live event coverage whenever one of us is around, or we've got um, like a, a daily summary kind of a show, or just wrap it all up in one normal TGI Wednesday night episode. So you guys let us know what you want us to do and uh, and we'll see what we can do about making that happen. So uh, okay. there is also, as Ryan mentioned, that uh, that image with the schedule is posted in the TGI Discord. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. So I think that that pretty much does it for our kind of like get it out of the way stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, I say we pull in our first patron who is, I believe, Janice. So Janice, yeah. heads up. It's happening. Don't be scared when this happens. Wouldn't you have to give her a heads up and then wait 30 seconds? I guess, yeah, stream lag. <laughs> Ryan, did you just mute yourself? Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. That's probably... I was, I was going to just uh, let people know in the Twitch chat, if you do want to join in on the Hangout, we're doing it through Discord, but mm-hmm. it's the uh, TGI Discord. So if you don't have the ability to insert yourselves into that discord 
Uh, I've pasted a handy link into the Twitch chat. But, uh, oh, you did? Okay, nice. Yeah, Janice appears to be away from the computer, so she might be... No, I'm no, not. No, she's there. <laughs> I'm getting... She's getting ready, and, and now we've rushed her. Jocelyn, yep. we're terrible people. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh... And then I'm gonna be I'm gonna double down on that terribleness and ask her a question. Janice, are you excited for E3? It's coming less than a month away. What do you want us to cover? And don't say the PC gamer show because that's, <laughs> Ryan that's will Ryan not cover will not. that. I had to turn off the Twitch channel because I was getting two copies of everyone. I couldn't figure out why I was hearing both of you. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, you gotta turn your radio off. Yes, turn the radio off. Uh, Microsoft and mm -hmm. Nintendo. Nice. Another Nintendo believer. I, I probably should have came up with that before the show. <laughs> Nint Nintendo. Ninten whatever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Nintendo, too. I really want to. I just really want to see what Zelda's doing. And Microsoft, though, I always like their shows. But what do we think Microsoft's going to have? Uh, like Halo 6? Like what? I'm kind of. I'm hoping that they have something cool in the vein yeah. of um, Quantum Break. I, I don't know Ooh, what that yeah. could possibly be, but I mean, like, they've got some pretty cool, like, exclusive titles, or they have had in the past, so um, hmm. you never know. But I'm hoping that they have some sort of new IP announcement that's, like, super cool, not, like, super lame. Yeah, well, of course. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, when and, I'm hoping, and I'm hoping for something in the VR realm. Oh, uh, maybe something closer to the another announcement for the HoloLens because that's Microsoft's jam, right? Yeah, they've been doing a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff. So I want to see what they're going to come up with. What if we get Minecraft two? Ugh. <laughs> no, that's not the IP you were hoping for. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, we are going to see new hardware from them. That's that's the big the big rumor as well as from sony too but uh like it's kind of crazy like nintendo's the one that's due up for new hardware they're not gonna have it anywhere near e3 but the other two systems that are doing well are introducing new hardware which is it will be interesting to see how they do because um talking to folks people who i talk to who own or don't own next gen consoles or like the xbox one or ps4 they they're not interested in getting a new console they're just they're looking towards getting that the current box if not nothing because they already own one right like i think the people who would already like want to go out and buy these things already have them right mm -hmm. i don't know yeah i think it's going to be real interesting how they're going to keep the old base happy with the new stuff i really don't know um i i think they're both smart companies so i think they'll 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 do fine but uh I don't know. I'm not really excited for new hardware. Like, the last thing I want to do is drop $500 on, on another piece of hardware <laughs> that, that does the same thing, you know? Says the guy who likes Nintendo hardware. <laughs> like, come on. Um, so, anything else you're looking forward to? I'm loving Uncharted, so I'm interested to see what Sony has hmm. up there, you know, in their, in their bag. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think both Ryan and I uh, finished Uncharted yesterday, so yeah, definitely interested to see what they do with that franchise. Well, well I'm on Chapter 10. I haven't ooh. finished. I need to finish before Overwatch comes out, so that's what I'm going to do this weekend. Nice. <laughs> Good thing it's a long weekend. <laughs> is it um, a long weekend in the States? No, it's the next weekend is the long weekend. Oh, I totally thought it was the same weekend as our long weekend. No, they have um, President's Day. Is that what Memorial it is? Memorial Day. Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. I don't know. It's something like that. Um, I Overwatch, man. That's that. That's out next Tuesday. That's out next week. That's crazy. Yes. I think there I... were rumors that it was coming uh, possibly like Monday night. Oh, like it's not at... a rumor. I saw the post. It's oh, it, did we you? Get it, yeah, we get it Monday at seven. Oh, nice. Yeah. On the long oh, so we get it on the long weekend. Perfect. We do. Adam will be totally so excited. My roommate is like obsessed with Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna boot that thing up right at seven, and then hopefully I have to get it downloaded first. But uh... oh no, I, yeah, have, I have the beta, so it should be auto updating. Or yeah, something. it should be there. Yeah, cool. So does that mean I don't get it? Just Canadian people? 
No, East Coast. Um, if you're on the West Coast, you get it 4 p.m. local time. Sweet. Yeah, so I don't know what, I, I can't remember what, which coast you're on, but uh, if you're in the Americas, America. you're getting it on Monday. West Coast. Nice. Well, you get it three hours before we do. Well, wait, no, you get <laughs> well, it at the same, the same time. time, but but locally, just, <laughs> it's three yeah. hours earlier. You get it at 4 p.m. We get it at 7 p.m. <laughs> From Which someone means who... I have to be sick on Monday. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, because you're not a holiday. Well, no, it's 4 p.m. You can you can do your you can get the day job in, go home and, and you're set. You're set for the day. That's not too bad. Nope. Oh. I feel like there's a bit of a delay. Is that just me? No, I think... No, you're right, Ryan. I think there is a little bit of a delay. <laughs> oh, okay. I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, I... What's Ubisoft got going for them? Like, uh, I think they're doing Watch Dogs 2. Was that what I heard? Are they? I've heard that. But... I don't know. Let's see. E3 predictions 2016. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I've heard, uh, obviously, well, they're not having another Assassin's Creed, because that one, they, they laid it a year. So. Um, oh, Telltale is doing Batman. No one cares. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to buy it until there, re there's a review out, but. <laughs> I am not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Did I tell you what happened with my Michonne playthrough on my ch on Chapter 3? I don't think that you ever did. I think you said something about something bad happened, but I don't. I think you were going to tell it on the show, and then we forgot to talk about it or something. But So what happened with Michonne? <laughs> it, was the, it is by far the worst Telltale game ever made. <laughs> by far, which hurts me to say that because I love the way they treat the Walking Dead property. But I joked, and this is going to be a spoiler, but it shouldn't really be a spoiler based on when it's set. But it's set between two comic book issues where Michonne disappears and then comes right. back. So you, you know she lives. That, yeah. yeah. And then at the end, I, I was predicting, like, I bet you at the end. And I, I do what I don't like to do and that I, I allow my brain to skip to the end and say, oh, I bet at the end, like, she pulls a Snoopy poop dog or whatever from The Simpsons and says, I must go back to my home planet. Choop, 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 choop. <laughs> Literally what happened. <laughs> she uh, she's having a conversation with the characters, and she says, "I think it's time to go back to my group." Shoop 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 shoop, and she just walks off screen, and that's the end of the game. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's and not to mention I had technical difficulties, like my mouse was freaking out, so I switched to controller. It doesn't recognize the Xbox One controller because it was manufactured <laughs> in the last two years. Yeah. So I use the Xbox 360 controller. It works. Then my batteries start dying. <sighs> It would, I finally, I, I eventually beat it, and then I uninstalled it, and then I um, took a little piece of the hard drive where the uh, Michonne game was holding, and I just took a magnet to it just to make sure. <laughs> Nothing could ever inhabit that same hard drive space again. Yeah, Makes it is. Uh, <laughs> salted it, the ground. <laughs> yeah, I salted the hard drive space. <laughs> I magnetized it to whatever. I don't know. Oh, man. Um, no, I'm just, I'm not impressed with Telltale games these days. Like, they need to kick it up. Their engine is... Terrible, abysmal. terrible. Abysmal. Uh, um, so we'll probably see more Halo. That's exciting, yeah. ish. If you're a Halo fan, it's okay. Uh, I'm a Zelda Halo fan. obviously uh, might get some Doom DLC news from Bethesda. Let's see. Ooh, what if we got another Elder Scrolls? That'd be a bit wishful thinking. But... Oh my God, I want new Elder Scrolls so badly. I think everyone does. <sighs> As good as Elder Scrolls Online was, everyone really just wanted that story to have been a single player, like without all the multiplayer MMO ness. If they had just gone straight up like single player, that would have been so good. So, ever since they released Elder Scrolls Online, everyone has been mm -hmm. just begging for the next single player Elder Scrolls title. So, I mean, I think there's also, well, they're definitely releasing some sort of a card game. I haven't been paying too, too much attention to it, but um, they're releasing some sort of that. So I don't know if that's what they're working on right now, and they're just not even working on the single player experience anymore. I, I don't know. I'm starting to get the feeling that people are just like, it's not worth throwing big, huge amounts of money into big AAA single player titles. Like multiplayer was where it's at, you know, nickel and diming people for 
cosmetic DLC that all their friends can see, like giving the game away for free or 20 or 40 or whatever, and then having all of these extra buyable items, like, mm-hmm. and the, the continuous multiplayer to bring people back all the time. Like, that's where the money is, not these you know, big, huge, expansive, single-player Skyrim tw- Skyrim type experiences. Yeah. So but- even if you're charging 70, 80 bucks for them, it's still maybe not worth the time for the developers. So I don't know if we will see another big single-player Elder Scrolls. I hope we do. I, I think we but- will, just not, maybe not at the C3. Like, Fallout 4 just came out, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Bethesda knows how to make money off those products. Like they, they've kind of got it down to a science. And Skyrim was their most successful game mm-hmm. uh, to date, I think. I don't, I don't even know if Fallout Four sort of trumped it, but Bethesda know has knows how to make those games. And of course, they're still going to dabble in, like you said, the free to play area. A lot of companies are, uh, but yeah, uh, Mario 3D in the chat room saying the team that makes Elder Scrolls just released Fallout Four. They're, they're the same team, so. Mm-hmm. It's well, yeah, and probably another couple ESO years. is getting um, an expansion. So, I mean, yeah, we're just, I, I feel like I need to get back into ESO and fully experience that story because I think I only got like maybe a third of the way through the story. Um, yeah. I didn't even max out a character because I just kind of lost interest because I had an MMO that I was playing already. So, cool. right. How do you feel about the Dark Brotherhood? What's the Dark Brotherhood? Do you mean like the Elder Scrolls Dark Brotherhood faction, or yeah, there are the quests or whatever. You know the quests where you like kill people and stuff. Oh yeah, are you talking about in Skyrim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I was like, is this the name of the next Elder Scrolls Online something? Like <laughs> no, well, it, it is the Elder oh, Scrolls okay. Online Dark Brotherhood DLC is going to be released on the. Th- so there just... you go. Oh. You like cut out there for the last half of your sentence. <laughs> oh, just the, just the Elder Scrolls Online, the Dark Brotherhood is going to be an expansion for uh, Elder Scrolls uh, coming out May thirty first. Oh, so. okay. I did know that there was going to be um, some sort of something coming out for ESO, but I like every time I get an email from ESO, I just delete it because I'm like, I <laughs> don't have time for you right now. So I'm so out of the loop on what they're doing. I don't even know, but. Maybe it's a good time to get back in, reinstall all that fun stuff. Um, is it free to play or just buy to play? How does that work? I I do want to check it out, but um, you do have to buy ESO as far as I know, but there's no subscription anymore. There hasn't been a subscription for about a year, mm. maybe longer actually. Hmm. Okay. Well, I I can't remember the last time I checked it out. It might have been in beta, and I remember thinking that it it felt very skyrim and to me it's like oh more skyrim that sounds amazing Mm -hmm. and they're going to support it with a with an mmo subscription that also sounds amazing but i don't know what it was that just kind of didn't grasp me i think they went too soon to free to play that it just seems i don't like the whole here's a store buy some mounts and some weird looking clothes and Mm -hmm. it's like guys it wasn't even that soon, though. I mean, it was Elder Scrolls oh. didn't go free to play until uh, it was at least a year and a half, if not two years after release. Mm-hmm. It was a long time. It was a long time that it was subscription only because um, that's kind of what got me out of it is I played for I think it, it came with the first month. So I played for the first month and then I was like, I can't justify paying subscriptions to at that point wildstar it was around that same time wow. too and i was just like i can't have like 45 dollars worth every month in mmo subscriptions i'm never gonna play enough to make this worthwhile so i dropped everything but warcraft because that's yeah. like warcraft was what i was most invested in where all my friends were where my guild was like aie has a presence in the other games but it's not the same like all my friends were still playing warcraft so yeah and warcraft's coming back Mm-hmm. pretty quickly right like august is going to be here before we know it and um not to rush through the summer or anything but let's face it it's already almost the end of may mm-hmm. and i i i'm kind of at the point where i'm fine with the fact that wow is going to be the last mmo i play but also the mmo i continue to c- keep coming back to because i find every time i go into another mmo i just i can't i can't i just can't i just can't accept it for 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 what i It is because I know MMOs are different. What really gets me is like MMOs, it feels very 
disconnected when you're in combat with people because it's all about the numbers, right? Because it's a giant server, mm -hmm. you know? And I've always been of the opinion that, like, well, if, I, if I'm going to do that, like, I'd rather play a game where I'm actually making contact and it's action-based and it's, like, I'm not worrying about my ping to know if I actually hit something. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, and that maybe that's what kind of kept me away from Elder Scrolls. It just felt really disconnected in terms of in comparison to actually Skyrim. But with WoW, it's just I've been playing it since that was just how all games were. So it's kind of accepted. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see where they go with Elder Scrolls. But the the sad part is about an MMO failing is just the reading the terrible news of, of the company and kind of how how much people they have to employ to make those games work. And then when they implode, it's just, it's really not very, it's sad, really. Looks but, like uh, the DLC is 20 bucks for oh. uh, Elder Scrolls or free with your ESO Plus membership. Yeah, so oh, that's, nice. that's basically like the subscription. So they gave you the option to keep paying a subscription if you wanted to and then gave you like bonuses. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's <laughs> what the plus thing is. So... Oh. Which makes so you sense. Have I mean, plus. so no, no, because it's like okay. I think it's ten or fifteen bucks a month or something. I think so. It's basically the same as a subscription. So they're giving you if you've had a subscription to ESO, then you get the DLC for free, which is pretty cool. If yeah. that's your game, but well, Star Wars does that too, right? Where you get the expansions for free with their premium subscription. I, I don't know. I've never made it past level four in Star Wars. <laughs> I liked that game when it came out. I remember it was like our second episode where we were like, yeah, Star Wars is really good. And um, yeah, it's kind of weird to think that that game's been around that long. But uh, I, for oof. me, I never even got that far in it because everything, everything, it was like when it first went free to play was locked behind a paywall. It's like, you can be a human. That's it. I was like, are you kidding oh. me? It's freaking Star Wars. And then it was like, if you don't have a subscription, you're going to move slower and you're going to earn XP slower. And so I couldn't even play with my friends because even if they started new characters, I literally couldn't keep up. Like I would be mm -hmm. running with them and then they'd shoom, be gone. And I was like, okay, I'm out. That's, that's <laughs> unfortunate. The, the speed boost. Okay. The XP boost. Yeah. I, I can, I can kind of understand the XP boost, but then it's the same argument as the runs boost because it's like, if you want to play with friends and your friends, Mr. Moneybags, you could throw money at, at uh, at old bioware to make things go <laughs> faster you're you're automatically left behind mm -hmm. both in game in terms of level but in, also in terms of hey wait up i'll see you at the next quest line kind of thing because he's just motoring along also it doesn't make sense what do you pay for like better shoes like you get nikes because <laughs> yeah. you got a subscription bonus like and then so your feet don't hurt so you can just run faster <laughs> yeah you got an insta insta boost because you mm -hmm. got the extra padding and in the, in the, in the air jordans what come on this is the future, but I don't know. Shouldn't be the elitist future. There's not a whole lot of people saying a whole lot of things about um, Ubisoft and what they may or may not be announcing. Well, they they have lots a lot of, of guesses products, for like... pretty much everything else, but Ubisoft mm. is uh, no one really knows. Do you think this is the year we finally get a reveal on Beyond Good and Evil Two? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't know because that game was like teased like 16 years ago and then they said, oh, yeah, it's still being made. And then the guy who was making it is like, yeah, we're not freaking working on that game. Are you kidding me? Ubisoft's got us working on Assassin's Creed hmm. uh, Oblivion or whatever. I don't know. Whatever they're going to call the next one. Um, yeah, they have that cool like For Honor game that hasn't come out yet. That they'll probably show again, which was a sort of 4v4 or combat where you were playing uh, you were playing like knights and samurais and stuff, which looked really cool. Um, so I want to see more of that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Like E3 this year is going to be interesting because there's no, besides Zelda, there aren't these big games that I am anticipating to see. But I think that just means we're going to be more surprised when we actually see what these companies have for us. Um, I'm certainly l hoping that Sony has an actual holiday lineup this year because last year they had nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a barren wasteland do you know what i'm kind of really hoping for and what? i don't know where it's going to come from mm -hmm. but i really hope that someone picks up the majority of lionhead studios because all of those people are now out of work 
Mm -hmm. And technically, it wouldn't be a new Fable game, but they Mm -hmm. could take a new IP from some other company, whether it's, you know, Sony or whether it's like something, one of the standalone publishing companies, something. I don't know. Like, I have no idea who's going to do it, but I really hope that that team got snatched up almost as a whole because I think anyone would be crazy not to do that. Um, Just because, like, I find the Fable world was so fun and interesting and like lived in yeah like it, just, it, it felt, felt full very, and vibrant exactly. and i i haven't had that feeling in in you know, video games in a long time like even skyrim it didn't feel lived in it felt populated you know because mm-hmm. they would put around people but they would always be like awkward they'd like walk up to you and then suddenly stop and turn and be like hello adventurer <laughs> you know <laughs> That's Did so you want to buy my horseshoes? Beep, like, beep, no, beep. you creepy robot. <laughs> like, I, I used to be an adventurer, then I took an arrow to the knee. I'm like, what? <laughs> Go away. No one's talking to you. Like, you can't be... And I'm having a conversation with this lovely, like, blacksmith, and this knight just comes over and starts talking to me. I'm like, um, excuse me, I'm, like, talking to someone. <laughs> their AI, their AI was very rude. But no, in, in Fable, I found that uh, it just felt very, very lived in, very populated, and I loved that. And I was always looking forward to a Fable Four. And it, there's a great article; it's long, but it's a great article on Eurogamer about sort of the history of Lionhead and the fact that Fable was never really Lionhead's game. It was another company's game that they sort of absorbed and unluckily for Peter Molyneux kind of like had to take over and became so popular that he had to actually like, you know, um, keep another company's baby alive, but he did eventually sort of like latch onto it, but it's, it's really an interesting article. But the fact is like the way that um, UK companies shut down, they had a month there where they sort of keep the companies on the, uh, keep the employees on the payroll while they wait for a buyout or, sort of another offer to come by and i don't think anything came up so Mm -hmm. probably everybody's moved on but but... i was gonna say but that would have been to like buy out lionhead studios that wouldn't have Mm -hmm. been necessarily to headhunt and pick the talent so Mm -hmm. i'm hoping that someone headhunted that team and even just like the creative portion of it and said look we need you to be on our next game like i would (laughs) i would love to see like I'm just going to absolutely lose my shit if we're watching E3 and then like a trailer comes up and it says like from the creative team that brought you Fable. Like I will I will literally lose my shit. <laughs> well well that's the thing because Microsoft still owns the Fable IP and that was mm-hmm. the reason they weren't willing to sell the Lionhead company because the Fable IP is you know makes them a lot of money. And the fact is, like, Fable 4 will happen and is more likely to happen now that Microsoft just kind of owns it. And they don't, and it's sad to say this, but it's, they don't have Lionhead sort of there anymore. So they can do whatever they want with it. Like, they could, they could give it to Rare and say, hey, Rare, make that pirate game Fable, you know, and they could easily (laughs) do that. I don't think they would. Maybe the old Microsoft would, but. I would also hope that if there were some some high powered ta- talent at Lionhead still left over, they would have shifted them over to their other UK companies like Rare, or um, well, I know there are others, but uh, Rare is the only one that comes to mind, and they're sort of like right in the same vicinity. But that would have been a good thing for them to do, and and something that I hope they did because Rare's working on that open world pirate game, which could really benefit from some Lionhead humor. Mm-hmm. I- yeah. Oh my god, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But uh, that Eurogamer article is really good and kind of highlights what they're hoping to do. They actually pitched a Fable 4 and it got denied, which w- which is very sad, but Yeah. Um it oh, was I like want to go play Fable now. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I I and I'm trying to remember like which one like which Fable would you play, right? Like you think back, like I liked Fable 3, but I still think Fable 2 is like the best of them all, I think. Fable 3 is definitely the one I played the most. I think I played through that two, three or four times, actually, now that I think about it. So, wow. yeah, I just, I absolutely loved that game. I mean, well, it's the whole reason my tattoo is blue. So, right. like, I just, I freaking love Fable. And Fable 3 was the one I played the most. Um, 
I think if it had been updated with like graphics and controls and stuff, probably even the first Fable, because I really, really liked that one as well. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Just can I say all of them? <laughs> yeah, you can. I think that's that's fine. And uh, the crazy thing is, you know, thinking back on the history of, of this show, I think I played through Fable 3 like on the show. I was I went back to it because I didn't finish it. I had purchased mm-hmm. like the legendary edition with the coin and the big bookcase and stuff. And it was like, <laughs> of course I did because, yeah, uh, because I was, I was yeah. young and foolish uh, <laughs> back then. I don't do it anymore. Which it's is, because you have a kid now, so your income isn't quite as disposable. <laughs> let's be honest. It's Amiibos. Like you had your, you had your, your dig there. You could have taken, but you didn't take, I, 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 you know, thank you for letting me slide on that one, but I'm not going to let me slide. The whole reason I don't buy collector's editions is because I buy them all the time. Uh, <laughs> You know, at 15 bucks a pop um but yeah i i liked fable 3 and i know it got it got knocked around a lot but it was still a good game i and liked I, it i really yeah. liked it so <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm curious janice who is still on the line have yeah. you ever played a fable game no i have not i'm just looking oh. up and reading reading the wikipedia site <gasps> you would love fable and i guess the best place to start i think would be the remastering they did on pc yes Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a solid game, and the, I have not played the remastering, but it is it is an HD re-release, right? Like, it was yeah. an actual... Yeah. Do you have that, Jocelyn? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> have you played it? I've never booted it up. No, I haven't. I haven't actually had a chance to play it. It's one of those things that you buy, like, day one on Steam, and then it sits in your library forever and ever, and you forget that you have it. <laughs> I feel like if we ever did a segment where we like picked a game and went back to it that we hadn't played in a very long time and then talked about that game fable would be a really good place to start because Mm -hmm. i have some solid memories about that title and especially the first one i remember playing that on xbox and just being blown away about the fact that you could like kick chickens and you know run around and and say bad words and it was it was just so much fun we totally should do that I think I think that's a good idea. We should write that down, uh, and we should do it soon. Maybe because you know what, something I've been experiencing lately is that it's it's kind of a dry season for video games. We're right now we're in the moment where there are some releases coming out, but as E three approaches, it's going to get less and less. And this summer would be a perfect opportunity, to, like each month, kind of just pick one title to like jump back into and say like, okay, this is our retro game of the month, and I think Fable should be the first one. Yeah, because I've got to say, I don't know about you, but well, actually, I do know about you because you also finished Uncharted 4 yesterday. Um, I did. I have been absolutely blowing through every AAA, like, single player experience that has come out. Like, I finished Quantum Break in a couple Mm -hmm. of days. I finished Uncharted 4 in a week. Like, I've just been blowing through this content, and I think it would be a good time to have a reason to go back and play some of those old games i don't know chat room you've been real quiet tonight too yeah tonight's been quiet janice i appreciate you uh you popping in here um you're the only one that sort of sort of got their voice tonight and i'm (laughs) i'm just i'm loving it but i don't know where everybody is maybe they're like me and they're like i'm not gonna get a coffee it's gonna go nap i'm like (laughs) all right fine but yeah, okay. I, got, I have more fable questions. Okay, okay so yeah, shoot. Yeah. The anniversary edition I'm up on Steam. Mm-hmm. Um only only looks like it's Fable One. Yes. The first Fable? Uh yes, it would be it would be just the first one. Fable two and three are on Steam, I believe, but I'm not sure. And there's DLC pack two, Scythe and Heroes and Villains. Oh, uh oh wow. There's like ten dollar packs. I didn't know that. I think these are just outfits. All right, I'm gonna uh, look it up and see exactly what it is that I have because I think I have a couple of different Fable things on Steam. Fable Anniversary looks really good, like in terms of the graphics. It says fully remastered with HD visuals and audio, and so. This is totally happening. (laughs) Although maybe we should wait for a Steam sale (laughs) because it's probably gonna just nosedive and in value uh yeah th- those dlcs you probably don't need to worry about because those are just outfits unless you want to like spruce up your uh, your character a little bit but uh yeah fable one is a solid title and totally worth playing and i think this also comes with the sort of ad- 
additional area, like the sort of epilogue area, which was a like a, a frozen wasteland or something. I can't remember. It's been a while. So I have both Fable Anniversary and Fable the Lost Chapters, and I don't actually think that I've played either one of them. <laughs> Fable the Lost Chapters is $11, and that is just the original Fable. That's the one they re-released. Or, sorry, that's the one that came out after it came out on Xbox. So, yeah. I don't know. I would suggest the Anniversary Edition because yes, that thing looks definitely. amazing. The, uh, yeah, the Anniversary Edition, I think, is like is the full digital remastering of all of the things. Ah, yes. I Yeah, get that one, and... Fable 2 is certainly, like, the best of, uh, you know, the, the a very good upgrade. But Fable 1, there's something about it that just felt really, really cool. Like, really, just felt really good. Fable 2 is that better version of that. And it's also got a dog, which makes it infinitely better. But um, I don't know. In terms, of, in terms of where you should start, I think Fable's totally worth experiencing. Uh, and that, that actually brings me to another question I had, and that... I, finish uncharted and i've been kind of toying around with the idea of what i should play next and everybody seems to think i should play dark souls but i'm hoping someone here can convince me that i shouldn't because <laughs> i i'm i'm tempted but i know it's going to be hard work jocelyn and and janice i don't know if i want hard work <laughs> it's it's very punishing so I, I'm with you there, Ryan. I <laughs> generally, I've even started playing some games on easier difficulties just because I'm like, you know what? I just mostly want the story with a sprinkle of gameplay as opposed to a whole lot of really, really hard punishing gameplay with a sprinkle of story. Right. Oh, okay. What what difficulty did you play Uncharted on? Uh, Normal. Okay. That's a good difficulty for that. I I played it on hard, and when you play it on hard, there are these really frustrating moments where you you are doing everything you can to succeed, but the game is is throwing enemies at you the right way that they just overwhelm you, and it's mm -hmm. like, well, there's nothing I could do. Like, but I know one person well, who will who will fight in the opposite direction. Uh, but I'll let you finish. <laughs> I was going to say that there were there were a couple of uh, of times, even on like normal difficulty, where there were just like overwhelming parts and you're just like you go through having you know little to no like the gunplay in that game was just so terrible and then to on top of that have these moments where you're just flanked by like 20 enemies and you're like oh my god not only are there 20 of you and you're smart enough to get around me and that's really frustrating but then on top mm -hmm. of that shooting in the game sucks <laughs> yeah body armor shotgun guy <laughs> oh yeah you yeah had to shoot their their helmet off i didn't even uh, know that you pulled vent in <laughs> oh yeah i did because he he's the guy who's probably going to try and convince me to play dark oh. Souls. so he's he's the uh well depending on how you want to look at it he'd probably be the devil on my shoulder whereas <laughs> you are on the the angel on my shoulder yeah. saying like don't do it it's not fable <laughs> and I, then, must, don't, I must have made a confession about oh go ahead janice uncharted I was so bad that the game said, do you want to try this in an easier mode? <laughs> hey, that's fine. Because you know what? That game is mostly story. And mm -hmm. the, I tweeted that I finished it. And my favorite thing about it was that it's a fantastic send off for the series. But it's also just the best character interactions in video games, period. I can't think of another video game that does interactions between characters better. Like there are, like if you look at other games, and I, I have a feeling that, someone's going to refute this but there there is a married couple in this game and they kiss and it doesn't feel awkward whereas in every other game <laughs> it is incredibly awkward and there's floating lips and there's weird like smacking sounds and i'm looking at you bioware that's a fact yeah yes. exactly like it's just like it's like two people taking mannequin heads and smooshing them together and making like like i don't know like cheese sounds like blah 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 it's just ugh. cheese yeah. sounds i don't know like Do you when mean you like smack two cheesy... pieces of cheese together oh you literally mean smacking cheese together okay yeah i, mean, <laughs> I thought you meant it. like super cheesy sound like oh my god that's so cheesy but no well, you mean yeah, like too, literally right? smacking cheese okay <laughs> yeah oh and david cage yeah uh dork master fleck in the chat room is saying david cage games like the heavy rain and um great games but 
for some reason, they just turn into awkward sex dolls, like Dorkmaster saying, whenever they do. But uh, yeah, performance capture, Uncharted 4, uh, amazing acting. Uh, but that's that's my piece. But um, yeah, the shooting is definitely like the bottom of the barrel when it comes to that game in terms of the list of things you, you list off to say what makes it a great game. Um, but I don't mind the shooting. This being the fourth game, I've sort of accepted its 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 follies. But if you put it up against Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's there's a clear victor there. Well, and see, I think that's the thing is this is my first Uncharted game, so mm -hmm. I get in there and I'm like, uh, WTF is this shooting? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, man, I know, I, I I agree with you, and I think that's just the way Naughty Dog has decided to design their shooters, and I think if you play. You have a copy of The Last of Us Remastered, right, on, on PS4? Yeah, I got The Last of Us bundle, so yeah. it's somewhere. So you, I think it's a code. It's not an actual game, and I haven't tried it yet. So You should try it, um, but I think, like again, it's the same issue with the shooting, although they put more of an emphasis on stealth, which may make you enjoy that game, and crafting, for that matter. You may enjoy that game more or less, depending on how much you like stealth. I think Uncharted 4 is the stealthiest one. Yeah, they really bumped it up a notch in terms of stealth because in the other ones, you did have stealth options, but you were instantly caught. If someone saw you out of cover, you were caught and everyone was around you. At least in they Uncharted 4. Add, they didn't add more dudes, though, if you got caught, unlike in this one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I found in this one, I'd like clear the room and then more people would show up anyways. If they detect you, there's more enemies than when you kill them. Mm -hmm. Like stealthy. I, I yeah. don't like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't really make sense, but, well, actually, I guess I, it, it kind of does. Yeah, because, like, oh, my God, he's over here. Come yeah, on. Everybody here. Video game uh, logic, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Dorkmaster's saying you don't play Uncharted for the shooting. Uh, it's true. Although, you know, it's just like you don't buy Uncharted for the multiplayer, but it is nice to check it out and play it because I really I like, like it. it. Yeah, Vent likes it. Vent also likes Dark Souls 3, which he wants me to play next. All right, Vent, <laughs> you have your platform. I was just gonna say, don't play Dark Souls one and two. Play oh, three. I thought you were gonna say, don't play Dark Souls three. You're terrible at this. No, like, what are you no, doing? no. All right. So we all get this idea that it's really punishing, like Josh said, but mm -hmm. it's not. It feels really rewarding playing. You don't lose anything dying constantly. You just get it all back. Okay. Um, I mean, you, you lose uh, these things that make you level up, but you never lose levels. That, uh, um, but you can always get it back, like unless you constantly. If you don't pick it up and then die, you lose it. But you're really See, not in a situation then, where you die. I think you... what you're missing here is that I am the person who would die and then die again and then die again before actually getting to my corpse and getting all my stuff back. <laughs> oh, so the thing is, it's it feels really rewarding just killing things. Right. Okay. Um, so I think the next question is basically: It sounds like we're at a stalemate because you're both making really good, really good points. So how about this? Like, let's phrase it in a different way. Would me playing Dark Souls three be interesting content for the show? Just in terms of Ryan ta talks about playing Dark Souls three. No, it'd be terrible. Oh well, then <laughs> because you'd be talking about this thing. Like, oh, this knight killed me. Oh, this other knight killed me, and this boss is really hard. <laughs> There's really nothing else to talk about. I just say play in your free time. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll, I guess I'll do both. I'll play, I'll, I'll find free time, and then I'll play Fable, and I will play Dark Souls 3. Uh, uh, a lot of people... I'm over in a quarter. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people in the chat are, are saying play 1 or 3. I've I've tried... I didn't play 1, I played Demon Souls, and I got a bit into it. But I have been enjoying... I did enjoy Bloodborne, and I've heard if you enjoyed Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3 is a, is a good jump mm -hmm. into the series. But... Uh, Maybe I need to go back into Bloodborne and see if that's something I really, I'm really interested yeah, in. Yeah, maybe Bloodborne. maybe Bloodborne is the one that I need to to try because I just oh. have this like total mental block in terms of anything Dark Souls. <laughs> well, <laughs> just I because like I tried, I can't even remember if it was Dark Souls one or Dark Souls two, but whatever the Dark Souls was that like you had like a big main room and you had to run away from a dude and then you had a staircase with a rock that falls down and a skeleton and then you mm -hmm. get out onto a balcony and there's a whole bunch of skeleton archers and I think I died about 45 times between the room with the big dude you run away from and the skeletal archers and then went fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Dark Souls 2 to me because I played a bit of it. I don't even think I got that far but uh, I, did it's you like literally. That? 
Hot no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I but... remember someone doing that, just rage quitting. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think... Um, I don't think I streamed it. I might have, but it was years ago, so... It would have been... Yeah, it would have been before Bloodborne, so it would have been yeah. two or three years ago, right? But um, uh, I never did... I never finished Bloodborne. I started nah. with Demon Souls, and I hated that, and that just ruined me for the whole series. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Demon Souls out. old school. I tried Dark Souls 3. I thought I'd hate it, and I loved it. So hmm. I like watching Matt play it because I really like the the kind of art direction for the game. I think it's it looks really cool. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the boss encounters again look awesome. There was this one creepy phantomy kind of boss that had like one fire sword and one like dark magic sword or something, and mm -hmm. it looked really 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 cool. I can't remember. It was like in a chapel she was or something. Crawling around or yeah. no? Or it was no, like that's a dude. That's the pontiff. He uh. He's an asshole. I, I honestly I have no idea who it was, but I just remember I watching that encounter about. and I'm like, this guy's really cool. He was like super kind of tall but like bent over and yeah. <clears throat> See, oh wait, no, that's uh that's the dancer. Yeah, um, the dancer, the dancer. That sounds right. Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Yeah. So he is extremely hard, ranked as one of the hardest. So for someone who said, like, it would make for bad conversation, this is a pretty interesting conversation. You called someone an asshole. We were talking about tiny dancers. <laughs> like, this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but the context isn't there, though. I know, I know. I'm just joking around. But um, I think uh, the thing for me, and this is going to sound shallow, and I don't normally do this, but, like, with Dark Souls 1 and 2, I never thought they looked that great. Like, the oh. graphics kind of felt like uh, sort of a generation behind. And again, ha-ha, the Nintendo guy is making fun of a game for being a generation behind. Shut up. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought, too. And that's why okay. I didn't play him. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Bloodborne came out, and the art direction was amazing. It looked great. It it was a sort of one-style note across the board in terms of, like, Victorian, dark, uh, Jack the Ripper-style look to it. Oh, I but like Jack the Ripper. it played really well. Yeah. It, it, I mean, the, okay. Well, that kind of came out wrong. I tell, obviously, Jack the Ripper being a uh, serial killer, you know, bad. But he's fascinating, and I like the Victorian era, so we'll leave it at that. Victorian, yeah, it, like, industrial-type London, I think is really cool. You ever finish, uh, what's that game? Assassin's Creed. No, yeah. I haven't. I the London one. That too. That's the Syndicate oh. one, yeah. No, I haven't yet. Maybe we make that one the old game we revisit so oh we can God. actually beat it. I so got many my train games and I, I stopped. <laughs> oh, you got the train? That's the best part once you get the train. Yeah, then I stopped, though. Oh, but it, yeah, it's not other, downhill from there. It's uphill. Other games came out. I know, other other games. But I uh, I personally think I'll I'll look into Dark Souls 3. Uh, the art direction does look really, really good on it. And I, I think it's... I think it's at a point where I'm okay with. I like the way it looks. It doesn't. It looks like it fits within sort of where we're at with how games look. Um, but looks Bloodborne, beautiful. yeah, check out Bloodborne, Joss. You you might you might enjoy it just in the sense that it is sort of. It's less punishing than Dark Souls. It's it's um. It feels they, less. Punishing. They use the same thing. That's like you don't lose levels. You don't. You only lose the things that get you a level up, and they're really easy to get anyway. Yeah, but the first level just feels fairer than the like Dark Souls uh, like tries to screw with you at the beginning, whereas Bloodborne's like, come on, get used to it, it's fun, you know. Yeah, if Dark Souls three, if you can get past the first counter uh -huh. uh, boss, because they don't they don't let you do this thing called Embering Up, which is like online play, okay. and it gives you extra health and damage. They don't let you do that before that boss, so you can't get help from co op. So oh. if you can if you can do the first boss, it is one of the hardest ones since you're like low level. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, you can do the game. And see, that's the other thing is that when I mentioned that I might pick up Dark Souls three, I had both uh, both mats just sort of say like, "Hey, want to do co op? It's fine. I'll I'll get you through stuff." Co ops terrible. terrible. Co ops terrible. System. No, no, no. It's good when you do it, but oh. the matchmaking system is terrible sometimes. Oh. Like but, a friend and I try to do it, you got to put a password in on your side, a password in on their side. They need to put a thing on the ground that says, um, I, I summoned me. And uh -huh. sometimes it doesn't work. Hmm. So sometimes you can't play with your friends. There's no invite button. Oh, hmm. interesting. Yeah. I got really pissed off the other night. <laughs> wanted to play together. <laughs> oh, well. Next time. Yeah. All right, so we are we are running into game night time a little bit here, but I don't know what we're going to play tonight. Um, 
Yeah, what should we play? And I asked chat room, and they didn't say anything. So I'm just looking at Steam, trying to see what I have the most hours on, and obviously Smite wins. Most but... hours on. We uh, can't go back to Smite. Work I know, which I really want to... I have such a hankering to play Smite, because we didn't get to play last week, and I've been watching the crap out of SPL. Like, I can't get enough of that. But... Um... Yeah. Do we try? Do we dare try again? I don't. Uh, I don't know because I'm gonna get be so frustrated if it doesn't work. Although, okay, so hmm. we'll we will try it. If it doesn't work the first time, we'll just go into like a training match or something. And if it doesn't work, then we'll move on to something else. So, what's our backup gonna be if Smite doesn't work? I'm. Do you want to okay, try so... heroes? Because I play heroes every week. But if you're uh, if you want to play heroes, then I don't. I don't often get to play heroes very often, yeah. and Shall I think once. Battleborn. <laughs> yeah, I don't have Battleborn. Uh, although, yeah, that's uh, tempting. But no, I'll I'll play Heroes. I don't often. I the only time I get to enjoy Heroes is through this fantastic Twitch show called uh, Hot's Ladies Night, <laughs> and uh, you know it's only once a week, which I is know. unfortunate because there's seven days in a week, Jocelyn. Wait, there was two one week. There was. Oh, yeah, right. we had a special Saturday night episode. Yeah, well, that's still just two days out of, out of seven. Out of seven, so. yeah, which is still not enough for you. <laughs> Let's make it three. And, I'll, I'll pass um, that on to the ladies. Be like, guys, guys, we're getting complaints. There aren't enough ladies nights in the week. Complaints. And then my liver is just going to be like, F that noise. <laughs> Ryan never complains. He just suggests strongly. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for the patron hangout. Thank you so much to Ventigo and to Janice for hanging out with us tonight mm -hmm. and asking your questions and kind of going over some E3 stuff and some and some Dark Souls and some other kind of game suggestions. So it was a really good hangout, and uh, we will see you guys in a couple of minutes for game night. I'm going to take the stream down to make my video editing life easier and then uh, bring it back up in a couple of minutes when we get logged in to hopefully cross your fingers smite but you never know so we will see you guys in a couple of minutes <laughs>